All right, so Yellow Jackets is now in full force weird mode with some of the things that happened here in episode two, especially the ending. <laughs> I advise not to be eating while watching this, but welcome back to Heavy Spoilers. In this video, we're going to be discussing everything in this latest episode, things you might have missed, some callbacks, and potential theories we have. There's something weird, and it don't look good. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hitting that like button is much appreciated, and subscribe to join the Lottie Cult of Spoilers, as we're going to be covering this weekly. With all of that out of the way, thank you so much for clicking this. I'm your host, Jared. Now let's get into Yellow Jackets Episode 2. So kicking off Episode 2, Shauna and Jackie are back in the meat shed, arguing over essentially life, which is basically just Shauna arguing with herself. If you remember back last week, Shauna ate Jackie's ear, being the first to taste the crunchy cartilage of human flesh, and this whole scene is her questioning her decisions. Her eating Jackie carried more than just the remedy for hunger, but rather identity. Shauna honestly is kind of a blank canvas of a character looking back at season one, and her eating Jackie can be chalked up as her becoming Jackie. This helps explain why she has the same life Jackie wanted as an adult. But here she's torn by her actions of eating Jackie, feeling guilty, of course, a bit conflicted, which leads to her playing life-size doll with the lifeless Jackie, doing her makeup, hair, and posing her. While on the other hand, Shauna takes a nice chunk of meat out of her forearm without knowing it, seemingly instinctually. She's riding this thin line of morality that we know tips more towards wrong in Shauna's later life outside of the wilderness. However, Shauna's meat shed playtime, <laughs> you know, okay, don't, don't Google that, is cut short with Thaisa discovering the f***ed up situation she has going on, calling for it to stop, demanding they get rid of Jackie's body via cremation. This is obviously a revelation for everyone, especially Coach Scott. Holy Christ. <laughs> Would have been my same reaction, buddy. Begrudgingly, this is the decision, which we'll come back to later, but also you can see the differing factions of girls slowly forming with tensions building. Everyone has obviously had enough of everyone's shit, especially when it's in the pee bucket, but Thaisa is slowly leading one side of things, with Lottie having her followers on the other. The Lottie side of things includes Travis, Van, Misty, and Crystal seem to really believe in the supernatural mumbo-jumbo Lottie is spitting out, thinking she knows more than the others. Even Van, who is in love with Ty, is firmly in Lottie's corner, present at the bare heart ritual at the end of season one and still wearing the deer bone protection necklace, suggesting Thaisa talk to Lottie about her sleeping problems. Travis continues to get Lottie's blessing before hunting, despite Natalie's loss of faith. Thaisa and Natalie are the two that are firmly in the other corner against Lottie's teachings and honestly being more logical and reasonable about things. So yes, tensions are running high, but also this could be seen as a divide amongst science and religion because there are already been several instances of religious symbolism. While some of it can be logically explained, like Thaisa's supposed dirt eating actually being pica, while other stuff, not so much. Natalie has been suspicious of Lottie ever since the seance night back in season one, and it doesn't help that she keeps urging Travis that Javi is alive, which honestly, uh, we, we don't know yet, but yeah, the, the odds are very slim. Never tell me the odds. Out hunting, the pair even parts ways, a visual representation of the rift of each of them following their own path, with Natalie suggesting that they meet back the weird mossy tree. We still don't know the meaning of this from last week. Maybe it contains some sort of power. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. But one major thing Natalie does is essentially stage Javi's death for Travis to finally have some closure. It looks like Natalie had snuck into Javi's suitcase, took a pair of his pants, and made it look like she found a piece of his drawers, torn and bloodied, suggesting Javi is no longer someone to worry about, or he ate Taco Bell right before the flight. I get it, Natalie is trying to keep Travis focused on the present, but honestly, it's, it's hella messed up. Like, what if Javi does just come back out of nowhere, Natalie has got some explaining to do. 
Even back at camp, Natalie and Lottie get into things with Lottie still believing Javi is alive and out there. And Natalie basically gives her the you shut your mouth when you're talking to me bit. So the sides have clearly been formed, but part of me really wants to see Javi just casually roll in one day and just everything turns to all sorts of chaos. Now this rift between the pair is still very much alive in the present day, and yes, it was confirmed Lottie is running a cult, or rather a wellness retreat. Depends on your point of view. But the man being buried from last week was in fact a rebirth ritual, so I'm chalking that up as a win. Lottie reveals Natalie has been in and out of rehab five times, meaning the rehab centers have maybe been hers, or she's been keeping tabs on her ever since the wilderness, which would explain why her purple goon squad was sent to her at the end of season one when she was trying to end her life. Last episode, I talked about the color meaning of the purple and orange worn by the followers and Lottie, and here it's revealed that they are dyed in-house with heliotrope flowers. And after a quick Google search, heliotrope means to move with the sun in reference to the flowers that follow the light of the sun throughout the day. So Lottie here symbolizes the sun, and the followers are the flowers following her. Wow. Deep. I don't know. Anyway, we finally discover what happened with Travis back in season one, and how Lottie was involved with things. Even 25 years later, Travis still believed in Lottie's powers, if you will, and the wilderness power is calling out to him. Essentially, past trauma is haunting him, and he desperately needs to talk to it or understand it. So he literally pulls a flatliners, you know, the hit 1990 movie where med school students see how close they can get to death, to help them understand the power of the afterlife. Travis here does the same, hanging himself with the help of Lottie. Travis was the one to set all of this up, the candles, the idea, there wasn't foul play like Natalie thought. Even though part of me thinks Lottie is leaving out some key information, especially the reasoning behind the bank information cleaning out Travis's bank. It's all an accident, a bit uh, anticlimactic, but this does give more evidence to the supernatural powers having control over them and influencing events, because the lift begins to rise even after the button malfunction. Lottie sees a vision of Laura Lee approaching Travis, similar to her showing up at the end of season one when Jackie froze to death. Things get (laughs) hella weird as there's also glimpses of Lottie's baptism from season one ending on a horrifying sound of the plane crashing and Laura Lee turning into Violet Beauregard with a terrifying look on her violet now blue face. Why Laura Lee turns blue is beyond me, but there is this crazy out there theory as to why Lottie sees this. It's because of her head being smashed in from season one during the seance, and this caused her third eye to open, therefore seeing things on a different plane. Now the third eye, or the mind's eye, is sometimes associated with religious visions, for example, seeing Laura Lee and also the visions of her baptism but also gives the person the ability to observe chakras, auras, precognition, and out-of-body experiences. So this could explain why Lottie has these abilities, or supernatural abilities, if you will, while others cannot see them. And weirdly enough, Laura Lee had similar, like, abilities, with her third eye being opened in Season 1 flashback when she dove into the pool, hit her head, and the lifeguard rescues her. Way out there, yes, I know, but think of all of the weird things Lottie has already seen and done. It could mean she's on a different plane of existence and ties back to the last episode with her giving the speech in the opening about things not being real. Natalie unfortunately has to stay at Lottie's compound because it's too late in the day for the train. However, this vision that she sees right before going to bed is intriguing. It looks like she's being resuscitated after one of her potential past overdoses. The two men here are clearly paramedics, but the man pacing by the door honestly looks like Travis. The two may have partook in recreationals together in the past, and this addiction is what caused a rift between the pair. Misty throughout this episode seems to have a fairly straightforward run of events compared to the others. She's trying to connect with the others because of Natalie's foul play suggestion 
while going back and forth with the mysterious citizen detective on the subreddit. Later at work, Elijah Wood's character of Walter is seen by Misty, and she receives a mysterious invisible ink letter from him. He seems to be on the same wavelength as Misty, eccentric, but very knowledgeable and sneaky about things. So I could see these two forming a mutual bond moving forward, especially if she goes back to the motel and pretends to be an FBI agent with him. That right there might be the most intriguing part of her storyline in this episode, setting up this mysterious person at the motel. Now what if, what if it's Jeff trying to turn in Shauna behind her back? But speaking of the authorities, Shauna wasn't as careful about Adam Martin as she might have hoped because Kevin Tan questions her about their relationship. Any and all of Misty's teachings from episode one are thrown out the window because, uh, yeah, the uh, text message records are not in her favor. Kevin was there as a friend, of course, and I think he's going to side with her after all of this settles. His tone didn't necessarily imply nefarious purposes. Callie, on the other hand, is the one who Shauna needs to keep an eye out for. Sure, she helped her get rid of uh, Kevin by making him leave with an excuse, but still holds Adam's burnt driver's license as like a bartering chip. This could be the thing that finally causes Shauna to revert full-on feral wilderness against her own family. Shauna is not a good person at all, and slowly seeing how she treats others, especially even her family, it's a full-on implosion ready to happen, breaking the Jackie mold she is living in. I thought this line from her was going to be a turning point, but nope. Callie. Cal's. At least go through the back in case he's still out there. And the more Callie learns of the inner workings of what's actually at play allows her to hold more and more power over her mother. Because Jay at the bar seems to be a potential romantic interest moving forward. Solely for information from his standpoint, but then actually begins to like Callie. She learns of the truth, gets mad, and he turns and fully loves her. The classic Fern Gully avatar turn. Or at least that's my guess as to what's going to happen. But with Jay slowly gathering undercover intel, Shauna's days are numbered. Oh, 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 and it's fairly telling about the two words Callie suggests for the crossword being satanic and ceramic, both relating back to her mother because of her past and the ceramic rabbits she owns. Thaisa might have the wildest journey and reveals of this episode, though. And just a heads up... I know in the last breakdown video, I completely butchered her name. That's on me. I have a tough time with pronunciation, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, getting into it, the No Eyes Man makes another appearance, guiding Thaisa to her death as she sleepwalks into the wilderness. Now, this mother trucker has made a couple of cameos, and I think it's supposed to be a harbinger of doom or death. Here he leads Thaisa to a cliff, and back in season one, her grandmother saw him right before her death. Looking at dream interpretations, yeah, we're inceptioning this shit. One meaning of someone without eyes could tie in with them feeling like an outsider from others. In this case, in the wilderness, Thaisa is not on board with Lottie or her little clan's ideals, telling Van not to associate with her. While in present day, she's newly elected, and all of this is foreign to her while she is on the outs with Simone and Sammy. Speaking of these two, though, Thaisa again shows she is fully unwell in her current role as mom, caregiver, and state senator because her sleep persona is slowly taking over her life. When Simone comes over to pick up Sammy, it's soon realized that Thaisa had completely hallucinated the entire time. Sammy was never at the house which makes me wonder how many other times has this happened? And she is entirely unwilling to get help for her situation. Earlier when she's on her coffee binge montage, the song Inertia Creeps plays, which pretty much sums this up because it's about being dishonest to yourself and dishonest to the other person. Being in a situation but too weak to get out of it, that's where Thaisa is. Now, what I really think is happening with her is a case of multiple personality disorder, potentially DID. There's multiple reasons I lean this way, one of which is her turning in the mirror without her actually 
attorney. Like, there's a dual personality here. Last season, Sammy also mentions to Thaisa that there is a good and bad person, and he doesn't like the bad one. The smile of Thaisa at the end of season one also speaks of something sinister lying underneath. And lastly, when we discover Sammy was never there to begin with and is still at school. In the car, Thaisa has a change of face when Simone is berating her, instead looking to see the cross traffic and accelerating to actually cause the crash. Thaisa is slowly having another personality take over, an aggressive one, which even explains the author from season one, but she has no idea that this is happening. Back in the wilderness, the girls prep Jackie's body for a ceremonial Jedi funeral, and again, tensions run high as they argue about keeping Jackie's jacket or not. And I mean, like, she's not going to need it. Shauna has some final words and gets as much closure as she can. Two noteworthy things, though. One is that Lottie sees the cut on Jackie's arm, kind of giving Shauna a look of, Hey, your secret is safe with me, so I'm 99% sure Lottie knows of Shauna's snacking habits. The second thing, though, is the passing of Jackie's necklace to Shauna. Obviously a keepsake to remember her by, but in the opening of season one with the death of the pit girl, this mysterious pit girl is seen wearing the same necklace. So how it's passed from Shauna to whoever is going to be an interesting game of musical necklaces. Because I'm dead set on Pit Girl being Mary. Similar looks between the two, but why the necklace? They light that some beach up. Jackie is toast, literally, and Travis burns Javi's pants as a sign of finally moving on. Javi is no more. This leads to Natalie and Travis having an intimate moment with one another, but during all of the smoochies and grinding, Travis sees glimpses of Lottie as Natalie, similar to the weird visions from episode 1. This happens when Natalie caresses his chest, similar to how Lottie did. I view this in a similar manner as how Laura Lee was to Lottie, being this guidance, shining light if you will. Hell, maybe Travis even has the hots for Lottie, but right now it's a bit cloudy. What isn't cloudy is the wilderness is made out to look like it has a mind of its own, weaving through the trees, breaking a branch, dropping snow on Jackie, preventing her from burning, but rather creating a natural smoker. This is shot in such a way that it could be a mysterious force causing this, or simply the branch broke. Either way, though, causes Jackie to become essentially a smoked pig, causing everyone to wake to the delicious aroma of Jackie's charred carcass. Radiohead's creeping up the walls kicks in, which is another bang-on musical choice, meaning being in a state of agitation through stress or worry. Of course, them worrying about hunger and the worry of them actually eating Jackie. But Shauna insists her baby wants them to. Now this final minute is weird, like weird, because it's all of them now dressed in ancient Greek dress, headpieces, sitting around an exquisite feast. Now I instantly thought that this was some sort of religious, forbidden fruit symbolism, but with them dressed in Greek garm, this is more closely tied to the Bacchae, which is an ancient Greek tragedy involving Dionysus and his maenads. A quick overview, but the story basically follows Pentheus, the king of Thebes, one of the oldest cities in the world, denying the worship of Dionysus. Therefore, Dionysus sends his followers, or maenads, to rip and tear apart Pentheus in an act called Spare Agmos. Essentially, this is what's happening here at the end when they rip apart and eat Jackie. Dionysus is the god of the grape harvest, winemaking, orchards and fruit, vegetation, fertility, festivity, insanity, ritual madness, and religious ecstasy, which is all present here. And the main ads were typically in a state of ecstatic frenzy through a combination of dancing and intoxication, which sounds awfully similar to the Doom's Coming Night from Season 1. And during these rites, the main ads would dress in fawn skins and usually carry a long stick wrapped in ivy and vine leaves tipped with a pine cone. Again, similar to what the girls are wearing during the Doom's Coming Rampage. Even in the Bacchae, they hallucinate their human prize is that of a lion, similar to the girls believing that Travis was a stag back in Season 1. A lot, a lot to unpack here, believe me, but the story threads and similarities, it's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. 
Coach Scott is the only one not to partake in this eating of Jackie, so he is already on the outs, and he's wounded, so most likely he's going to be the next in line to be eaten. Misty's finally going to get a taste of that delicious rump roast she's been craving. I'd like to put some barbecue sauce on that button. Just... Stop it! Anyway, that is episode two of season two. We did get this episode early and unfinished for review. So if there are some major differences, please let us know in the comments. The only ones that I seem to notice are a few minor VFX shots. But I'd love to hear your theories. And of course, let us know if we missed anything in the comments. And I'll let you know we're currently running a competition, giving away three copies of the Superman collection on the 15th of April. And all you got to do to get a chance of winning this is like this video, subscribe with notifications on, and drop your thoughts of Yellow Jackets episode two in the comments below. We pick the comments at random at the end of every single month, and the winners of last month are on screen right now. So if that's you, message us on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, be sure to check out some of our other cool videos right over there. We're cranking them out. But with all of that out of the way, thank you for your constant support. I've been Jared. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.